Hello, I'm Juan Davies, Chief Creative Officer at KCTM PBS SoCal, and we're partnering with the newsroom of KPCC and LAist on a daily reporter roundup. Let's start with you, Libby. What advice do you have for people who have not voted yet? Well, first, for in-person voters, we have seen a huge early mail-in turnout so far. But in Los Angeles County, we could still be seeing close to a million ballots coming in on Election Day itself. That may mean lines at polling places on Tuesday. And especially with COVID-19 restrictions in place, lines could appear longer than they actually are because people are more spaced out. So don't be discouraged if you pull up to the vote center and you see a line out the door that will most likely move faster than you think. And if you do arrive on the later side on election day, stay in line. As long as you are in line by 8 p.m. when polls officially close, you will still be allowed to vote. Now, for mail-in ballot voters, don't forget your signature on the return envelope. I cannot emphasize that enough. And at this point, I recommend dropping off that ballot in person or at an official ballot drop box instead of putting it in a mailbox. The most common reason ballots are rejected in California is that they are postmarked after Election Day, so you might as well deliver it right to election officials at a vote center or a drop box. And if you decide to drop off your mail-in ballot at a vote center, you don't have to wait in line. Look for that election worker who will take your ballot, skip the line, save some time. Jackie interviewed Governor Newsom to talk more about COVID testing. What did he tell you, Jackie? Yeah, we talked last Friday at a new $25 million COVID-19 testing lab in Valencia. Newsom had officially opened the lab. It'll be able to process 150,000 test kits per day when it's fully operational in January. And that'll double the state's current testing capacity. Newsom said California had to step up because the federal government hasn't. And what he meant by that was by opening this lab. Um, there isn't a federal testing program. The Trump administration has left it up to each governor. I asked him also about the CARES Act, which is federal legislation passed last spring that requires health insurance companies to reimburse the state for some of the costs of the COVID-19 tests. Now, the CARES Act expires at the end of January, meaning California would have to shoulder the entire burden of paying for COVID-19 testing. That would be in the billions of dollars, and Newsom said the state simply can't afford it and that Congress has to pass a budget extension. California's cases are rising, and Newsom said that if we get in the same ballpark as North or South Dakota, he would consider a statewide stay-at-home order. As kids are learning from home due to the pandemic, the Los Angeles Unified School District has seen a drop in attendance and more low grades like Ds and Fs. Carla has that update. Yeah, Superintendent Austin Buechner shared these charts that show that among high school students, attendance is down and middle school students are getting more low grades like those Ds and Fs. And I asked him what he made of these findings. And he said that teachers, administrators, students, and parents, they're all trying really hard during distance learning. So he thinks the only way to really fix this is to find a way to get students and teachers back into classrooms. Here's the thing though, because of the COVID rate in LA County, LAUSD won't be able to go back generally physically until January at the earliest. So in the meantime, the district is expanding its one-on-one -on -one tutoring assessments and support for students with special needs or students who are really struggling. And we'll now welcome back students in groups of up to three for these limited in-person support services. And finally today, Frank has an update about the sheriff deputy's body cam video showing the shooting of Fred Williams. Yeah, there are two things you need to know about this video. The first is it's the first ever body cam video from the sheriff's department. The department only started using them a few weeks ago. The second is this video raises more questions than answers about the killing of 25-year-old Fred Williams. It shows a deputy chasing Williams and finding him climbing over a fence with a handgun. The deputy says Williams pointed the gun at him. The video does not clearly show that. One police expert who looked at the video told me that Williams could have turned the gun on the deputy in a nanosecond and that the shooting was legal. Activists argue it was excessive force. The coroner's office initially has listed the African-American man's cause of death as gunshot wound of back. It has yet to release its final report. Thank you, Frank. And thank you all for tuning in. We will see you tomorrow.